got a bunch of these single form thread mills and full thread mills and a lot of them are marked telling you what the cutting diameter of these things are and this one is a real one it's from a company called Vargas which is made in Israel I can't see it on the camera here but I'll put a picture of it up this one clearly looks like it was marked by a rotary but I think some of these may not be as fancy and they may just be engraving them flat this one is from online carbide I can't really make up that one on the camera either but if you don't know the diameter of this cutting edge here, that little tiny thing with three flutes, they aren't very valuable. So it's going to benefit me to mark some of these, like this one that I bought from eBay with a 180 cutting edge. I want to know how large that is and I want to be able to have it loose somewhere and still know how large it is. Currently I've just got it in a case that I put a label on that says 180 diameter and I'd like to know things like the neck diameter and maybe even the threads that it'll, it'll cut. And this one happens to be a 20 to 56 thread per inch tool. So I've got my improvised V block here and I'll put these aside for the moment. Those are already marked, but I didn't do it. Set that in its little cradle. I'm, I don't know if this will work. This could be just a mess of marking. I don't want it to be a destructive mark. They don't go very deep at all. Again, here's the Vargas, but you can't see too much of it unless you catch it in the right light. But you don't want much of a mark on this. I'm going to try to mark it at 150 millimeters per second, 10% power, and 40 kilohertz frequency. And this is just carbide. So if I light this up, I'm not going to show the contour. I'll jump over to the computer for a second. So that's what I'm going to do. 180 diameter, 115 neck, 20 to 56 TPI, and there's the part number. I, I guess I'm going to include that, but I'm going to be chicken to mark these separately. So I'll just select the top edge, the top marking now. So I'm not going to use the contour, I'm just going to light it up as a box. Try to put it over the center and to catch the top of this, I didn't use my little dots. I used a caliper and just kind of winged it so it looked like it was about 18 millimeters tall. We'll find out if this is going to work. That looks kind of close. Well, let's see what it does. I'm just going to mark it one time. It's going to be a hatch at 0.05 millimeters and 0 and 90 degrees. So let's give it a shot. I guess I need to turn the laser on. Okay, let's try that again. Well, it was fast. That looks perfect, a little bit stretched out, but that looks great. I can't feel it, so that's good. It's not rubbing off, so that's good. Well, I'm happy with that. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do that and it'd just be completely garbled without having the rotary indexer, but it looks pretty good. I'm gonna try another. So this tool is from the same manufacturer. It's called a corner rounding end mill. It's also carbide, has two ends, but if you can see the shank, it's got no markings on it. And you also need to know the radius of this little tool so you can actually know what it is and program it correctly for the milling machine. So I wrote it on the case, but if the thing ever gets separated from the case or if you have it in the tool holder and it gets misplaced, it's kind of hard to measure this. I guess you can put it on a comparator or something and figure out what it is. I don't have one, so that's not too easy of an option for me. So I'm just gonna lo load it right in there. I don't know what the part number is, so I'm gonna pause for a second and see if I can find it. I found the part number and we're gonna get a little more aggressive with the text this time. This is gonna include a couple of different things. It's gonna include the radius, it's gonna include that 15 thousandths tip length because these are actually extended slightly beyond the radius by that amount. And they also have a pilot diameter, which is the diameter of that little tip there. So all of that information is helpful if you have to set up a form tool in CAM software. So I'm still gonna mark one line here because I'm not that brave. So let's line it up. I'd like to put it a little more in the center. Yeah, let's try that. I'm gonna use the exact same settings as the previous one because I thought that looked pretty good. And let's do it. Caught it a little bit to the top side, didn't I? It looks great though. Looks really good.
And I made that bold this time. That was the only difference in the text. Right below it, I'm going to put the part number. Select that. Light it up. That's not good. Let's try it right there and see if it ends up a little high again. Yeah, that looks excellent. Just making sure it's not so superficial that it rubs off. Well, these settings look pretty good. So, just to repeat them so I don't forget them. I've got one loop, 150 millimeters per second, 10% power, and 40 kilohertz frequency. And this is some kind of carbide. Micro-grain carbide, I think is what they call it. Well, I'm going to do a couple more of these, but I'm pretty happy with the settings, so maybe that'll be interesting. Here's another one, and I'm going to mark M4.45 to 0 0.80 millimeters. Same settings. I think this is the same shank size. I think these have all been 3 16 shanks. I guess I probably should have paid more attention to that and changed it if it were larger. You know what? That No, no the first one is still 3 16 That's fine. Let's mark it. Well, that's tiny, but that looks good. That looks great. It's going to be a 0 0.031 radius tool, same kind of thing. I'm going to mark the part number and the dimensions of the tool, but it is a smaller shank, so I'm going to remeasure. Previously, I was at 18 millimeters height, and now I'm right around 17 millimeters. So I'm going to drop this a little bit so I can keep my marking as good as possible. I suspect it wouldn't make that much of a difference, though. But I'm going to go right there. And this is a smaller tool, so I may need to, yeah. Ah, uh, that, that's going to fit. Not by much, but I think it'll fit. Let's do it. Looks good. A little rotation. And let's do the part number right below it. Well, barely fit that, but it worked.